All right, today we're gonna take us a little break from working on the Caprice. A couple hour break at least. Uh, it's nice, cool weather outside. I'm gonna take advantage of it. Um, my chicks are in need of attention. And if you don't know, I got a few chicks and they dig me. So I need to take care of them. And as I'm talking about chicks, I mean chickens. They've gotten kind of big. They got them cruising around the yard. They dig it. I don't dig it because they're tearing up the grass. I'm trying to grow grass. Apparently that's how they roll. I, uh, I built them a little hut. But they like it. I mean, they roost there and all that. But they need a place to lay eggs. Because I heard her clucking the other day. And I'm pretty sure she's starting to lay eggs. I just haven't found them yet. Which that'll be fun in a couple months. So I'm going to take some time out of the day to build them a spot that they can lay eggs in. Let's see if I can get on this hill and spin the tires. Hopefully not. But yeah, I'm going to build them a little spot where uh, they can lay the eggs. Yeah, I'm totally going to spin the tires when I do that. Tear up my grass even more. So I'm going to build them a little nesting box. And uh, that way they can lay me some eggs and I can get some breakfast. And hope they don't run into a tree in the process. That would suck. Old truck over here so I can use it like a little work table. Boom, good enough. Time to get started on working on this. Hopefully it won't take long. Seven days later, might be done. Here's the finished outcome. And I started running short on materials. And I started working on it right after I got off of work. So I was kind of running out of just being in the mood of doing stuff. Kind of got started getting tired. And I was going to make this fold down, hence the handle. But I don't have any hinges. I'm going to screw in there for now. Made my roof too short. I just started making a lot of mistakes there at the end. So I was getting tired, getting aggravated. So I kind of call it quits. 
I'm gonna come back to it. I still have some more wood, but for now, I'll just lift that up. See, my little cheekies are in there. I don't think they've really been in there since I've made it. So, I'm gonna lock them in the little pen tonight, see if we can get them familiar with it. But, my brother got all the talent in uh, woodwork. You know, he could he could have built this with just the scraps that I had for cutoff. So I'm gonna go do something that I'm actually decent at. All right, so we got the uh, coop done-ish. Uh, good enough for now. Uh, Ryan, a bunch of materials, you know how it goes. But we'll go back to it, maybe. But uh, I got some good news. Uh, we passed 100 subscribers, so thank you. Yes, you. Thank you. That's awesome. I uh, didn't really think we'd get that much traction, but uh, it is, so that's cool. So we're at some awesome weather, so we're gonna work on this some more. It's like 60 degrees. Uh, awesome. Nice breeze going, sunny, not raining anymore. So we're gonna seize the moment. Uh, I'm gonna lay out the back of this for the bridge. Let's get to it. So now we are under the caprice. See that big old hole up there? That's why you put a bridge in. Well, one of many reasons to put a bridge in. They're both like that. Ew, not good. Yeah. So those things get all messed up when you three wheel and I kind of think the power balls being on the rear end wrong had a lot to do with that as well. But we'll put a bridge in there it would be made out of plate, so we won't have that problem. That stuff's some thin stamped metal. It's not even an eighth inch thick. So we're going to see about plating the inside of the frame. I'm going to drop the plumb bob down, get me some measurements here from cylinder to cylinder, and compare it to our axle, and uh, start building a bridge. So this here is a plumb bob. If you don't know what it is, you're about to learn. Uh, it's actually a pretty handy little tool. Uh, I've used it a lot of times to run a pipe when you're trying to get a measurement from the ceiling, something to lay out on the ground so you can measure it instead of trying to run a tape measure through the air because that's not any fun. But it also works for suspension also. Uh, say you're trying to lay something out, kind of hard to measure up here, drag your tape measure across to get an accurate measurement, especially when you don't really have anything that you're measuring to. So what I'm going to do I'm going to drop this down and measure where my cylinders need to be. I'm going to lay it out on the floor with some marks. That way I can measure how far apart they need to be. I can go over to my rear end, make sure the rear end is correct. Uh, I kind of put the power balls where they were originally, so hopefully that guy had them in the right place. Um, they look good this way, they just didn't look good this way. Uh, so I, I feel pretty confident about them being in the proper position. Uh, left and right so as i said there's no there's a big hole up there there's no way to attach this so kind of thinking basically what i'm gonna do just stick me something across the hole the opening slide it up in there turn it sideways set it down on the frame wrap this around it there's your buddy the rooster and uh we'll drop it down just about to where it almost touches the ground and then you just let it sit Sit and spin. You can kind of help it and stop it, but you don't really. Yep. You want to let it do its own thing. And then you put a mark on the floor, you got your measurement. So we'll get to that. So that's what I got rigged up up there to kind of fill the void. And I just stuck a wrench across it. Nothing super technologically advanced. You know how I roll. And it just comes down to the ground. Simple. So get it just off the ground. We'll let it sit and do its own thing. And once you get everything set up and precisionly set, remember that you don't have a Sharpie on you. So, you can rub your fingers against the concrete until you bleed, make a mark of that. Or I got an ink pen that I use at work that will not write on paper. But it's good enough to write on concrete, so that'll work. Make it a little cross. You know, forward and backwards measurement and a side to side measurement. And once your lines intersect each other, 
that'll be the center point. So we got our measurements transferred over. Got one there. And one there. Actually there. Normally I lay them out with soapstone. Make you a little crow's foot on the ground. That way you got a point. Uh, it's not best to make a fat mark or even a mark. Because uh, a lot of times, you know, if somebody, if somebody else is helping you, they're like, you know, did you go on this side of the line, this side of the line, or that side of the line? Uh, if you're using soapstone, a lot of people don't sharpen it for some odd reason. And soapstone's fat, so it doesn't make a very precise measurement. Uh, I usually sharpen mine like a wedge. And like I said, I do a crow's foot, you know, just like that. Two little lines. It points to an arrow, lets you know where the point is that you measure off of. Uh, also, if I was laying out a bunch of lines under here, uh, or if I wanted to snap a chalk line, usually I do that if I'm laying out a bunch of lines so you can see where everything's intersecting. Like if you were to drop a four, or lay up a four link, you drop your marks, run you some lines, pop them with a uh, chalk line. Little tip that I learned a long, long time ago. My brother taught me this. Uh, you can spray paint them. They make clear spray paint that you can use. Uh, but most people have girlfriends or wives. They have hairspray. Hairspray works probably better, in my opinion, than uh, uh, clear spray paint. It just it sticks. You can spray it there, it'll be there, I don't know, a long time. <laughs> I've got stuff that's been there for years inside of the garage. Outside's probably a different story. But uh, yeah, just spray it over there and you ain't got to worry. You can roll around in the car, you can sweep, and the lines will stay there. So just a little trick for you. Uh, so we're going to go on and do some more tricks, um, maybe. But we're going to build a bridge, so we're going to do that. Yeah. So we're going to take some additional measurements here. Uh, want to measure from where your spring's going to be setting, basically to your, the bottom of your frame, that we have some kind of reference uh, to go off of. Like I said, I do my bridges a little bit different. Most people, they just lay a bridge right in there. That's cool, but you're losing a lot of room to build lay the car low with. Like I said, we are building low riders. And usually somebody will put a piece of eight inch channel in there. Uh, that's about as high as you can go. And you're at the top of the frame back here, pretty close to the top of the frame there. So you can't really go up much higher. Otherwise your edges aren't gonna be touching the frame. Now you're losing, let's see here, use this precise measurement tool. You're losing about three and a half inches. Uh, you know, you're, you're raising your vehicle up three and a half inches, basically. So that's why I build my bridges the way I do. That way you can still have a good bit of spring. Um, you know, it's a better ride. The car still lays low, etc. So we'll get some measurements. Write them down. Uh, multiple things. Soapstone. Write it on concrete. Asphalt. Metal. A frame, you know, make marks, gas tank. Yes, gas tanks in this car. Write them anywhere. You know, like I said, write them in multiple places. I write them on cardboard, then I lose the cardboard, or spill water on the cardboard, or light the cardboard on fire while I'm welding. You know, it's nice to have a backup. Because uh, usually once you cut this stuff out, it makes it a little bit harder to measure. So take plenty of measurements beforehand. Um, also, as I said earlier, or as I was talking about earlier, uh, when you drop a plumb bob down, make sure your vehicle's level too, because if your vehicle isn't level, then you're going to have a problem, because your plumb bob's going to be crooked. So, that being said, uh, we'll start cutting this out. Well, first I'm going to write down my measurements. Then we'll start cutting it out, and then we'll start laying out our bridge, and cutting it up, and cutting it out, and welding it together, and throwing it in, and then we'll be done with the bridge. Just like that. Just a few minutes of work. So, say you're trying to measure from there to there. You would think you just stick a tape measure on there. Well, it's not really the best thing to do. For one, this thing kind of curves. So that's not the best way. Um, like I said, you can do it. You can get in the ballpark. Uh, usually what I would do is either run a level across or a straight edge. And then just measure from there down. We got six and a half inches. So say you don't have a four foot level. Pretty understandable, most people don't. You have a two foot level? You got a two foot level, you can just rest it against your frame. 
and then set the thing level. It's got a sweet magnet on it. So you can set your bubble level and it will be perpendicular with whatever's up there. So you can just measure from your frame down, six and a half inches. Say you don't have a two foot level. We'll use a six inch level. And say you don't have a six inch level. We got you covered there too. Still options. Uh, you just measure from here to the ground and from there to the ground. Preferably you'd have concrete, uh, flat concrete. I mean, I guess you could throw a board down on the ground. It's possible, you know, let's say anything straight, straight and level. And as long as you can get it level. Uh, we got 29 and 35 and a half. So, with the use of a calculator, you can figure that out. Uh, it's six and a half. But, that's how you can tell. All right, moment for safety. I'm doing this after I've already cut everything out because I don't want to curse myself. But, it uh, doesn't mean I wasn't trying to be as safe as I could. I had a fire extinguisher on hand, had my fire blanket wrapped around the gas tank, so if it blows up, it'll keep the fire, or keep the gas tank warm. Uh, safety glasses, didn't have a face shield, uh, so I kind of like the way I did it this time better. Uh, I had an old welding hood, just took the dark lens out, had a clear lens. Uh, it actually worked out better in a face shield. Uh, the, the 3M face shields, they're all right for, you know, working on the bench and stuff like that. They're cool, they work good. But like under a car, a welding hood, it covers, you know, your chin, kind of wraps around your face a little bit better. So I'm going to be doing that for future reference. Uh, if you're fancy, you just get an automatic darkening hood and put it on grind mode. Uh, I don't really like that. I, I break them too much. But, uh, chicken. Uh, anyways, where was I now? Fire extinguisher? Check. Fire blanket? Check. Uh, had this welding jacket on. This welding jacket on. Doubled up. Still got burnt a little bit. Uh, just a teeny little bit uh trying to kind of protect myself the older i get i used to not care i used to be on a t-shirt and burn my chest all up look like i got shot with a shotgun uh just got a new tattoo on my arm I already messed it up so that's why i'm trying to kind of double up to protect my investments that i make on my skin on my skin uh hopefully it'll heal out all right uh it's like dead center in one of the words which is awesome but we move on so yeah just be safe you know use your head uh this car did have a full tank of gas i was going to pull the tank uh when it was when the car was coming I, was, I had full intentions on dropping the tank but uh full tank of gas which i've always been told a full tank is better than an empty tank uh, it's not the fuel that ignites it's the fumes and i've seen that firsthand uh, i took a five gallon bucket of gasoline i was throwing a match in there it did not ignite but if you hover it above it it'll probably ignite. And if you dump it on the floor, it'll definitely ignite. So use your head, be safe. Phase one, complete. First cut, that's the hardest one to do. So this side decided to go just a little bit different. Uh, just kind of run down that weld there, the Metabo. Cut off wheel for most people. And uh, 
put me a little slit in there, make those two different pieces because that's where all the strength really comes from. And then we can hammer it that way, kind of break the weld. You can see it's already starting to break up there. Be a lot cleaner, a lot less grinding, a lot less sparks thrown towards the gas tank. And then let's fold that back and break it off too. Uh, but that stuff up there, you can cut it off with a cutoff wheel, but plasma cutter is way faster. I also covered the holes for the cylinders in the trunk uh, with a flat piece of metal. They want sparks going up in the car, catching the seat on fire because, you know, seat foam is pretty, pretty flammable. Uh, he's also got carpet in the trunk for around the stereo. That stuff's flammable. Uh, I didn't delete anything from here, so let me clear my phone out and I'll get back with you. Thank you. So, yes, also filled or I covered the uh, holes in the trunk. For the cylinders, uh, put a piece of flat metal over those, keep sparks from going up in the car and igniting the back seat because seat foam is very, very flammable. He also has carpet in the trunk for uh, amp rack, so that's flammable. Um, I have one more thing I was going to tell you. What was it? Oh, yeah. Uh, when you're done welding, don't just put everything up and leave. Uh, do what they call a fire watch. You know, kind of hang out, fart around on Facebook watch the Cadillac Dan show on YouTube, but sit around, you know, after your project, sit around by your project, make sure nothing's smoldering, you know, make sure nothing decides to catch on fire afterwards. Uh, you'd be amazed the stuff I have seen catch on fire afterwards. Thank God it wasn't my stuff, uh, but I've seen some buildings and stuff burn down. Just, you know, people would get done, they'd wrap up their stuff. You wouldn't see no fire, you know, wouldn't really see any smoke, but a little dinky smolder. It'll, you know, you'd be amazed what it can destroy. So, you know, like I said, hang out. Like I said, fart around on your phone. Keep an eye on it. Obviously, don't just zone out. But, you know, periodically check on it. Make sure you don't see no smoldering. Never hurts. Take a bottle of water, poke a hole in the lid, squirt it on stuff, you know, if you're really worried. Common sense. You know, you would think common sense. Use it. But... Uh, where are we at now? We got chickens in the shop. You have your own place to go. Go there. I have to bring the Cadillac up here. We have a coop. All right, so we got our spring perches all cut out. Got it all cleaned up. Uh, about to start making some templates for it. I'm going to put a plate on the inside of the frame, kind of reinforce it. Uh, that way I put the bridge to it because frames are pretty thin metal. The bridge is going to have a lot of stress on it. We want it to be as strong as humanly possible. And I like to overkill stuff, so we're going to do that. So you remember that thing I told you about uh, using the chipping hammer to get all the slag off? Don't do that. I found a way easier way. Uh, instead of hitting it up with a chipping hammer, save the first. Just hit it down on the corner. Knocks it right off. Plus it's way quieter, way faster. See? Takes it right off. Goes from that. Of that. Just run over it with a buffing wheel and be ready to weld. Thank you. 
So there's our reinforcement plate in place. Uh, if I didn't have the fuel tank in there, I would have went back a little bit further. I really would have tried to cover as much as I could. But this is just a bridge. So we got that in there. Now we're going to start fitting our channel up to it. All right, so there's a crude layout of where our bridge is going to be. Uh, we tried to push it up as high as we can. That uh, way we got a bit less of a pocket. But we had six and a half from the bottom of the frame, which is out where we're at now. So that'd tell me we need about three inches to be back where the factory pocket was. So we'll build our spring cup three inches. The only thing you got to take into account is the thickness of your material. So if, say you're to cut your piece off and raise it up three inches and then put that piece that you cut on top of your pocket, that's going to be three and a quarter. So you really need to cut it two and three quarters. But we'll get to that in just a second if you're confused. So this is what we're using for our spring pocket. It is six inch pipe. Yes, six inch pipe. Pipe's always measured from the inside because the contents go on the inside, not the outside. Tubing is measured from the outside. But this does have an outside OD uh, about six and five eighths. Inside, really it's about six and a sixteenth. Get you in the frame there. About a six and a sixteenth on the inside. Stick a coil in there, plenty of room to move around. We're not making that deep of a pocket anyways. We're doing uh, three, no, two and three quarters, I think. I'll have to look back at my video and see my measurement. But another thing, make sure your uh, pipe is square because this is a cutoff that I got from a steel plant up here and it's not very square. I don't know if that was the factory end because the other end's pretty square, so they did a good job. But check it over before you make the first cut because otherwise you might be making two cuts we got our other end it's pretty darn square i'm going to show you how to make a line around this thing there's a few different ways uh, back in the day when i first started i just run me a tape measure make a mark make a mark make a mark all the way around connect them as yeah, all right but there's way better ways i've learned uh, i'll show you one of them if you have the tool um, and then i'll show you another way of basically making your own tool so we got our measurement two and three quarters put a crow's foot on there that's what a crow's foot is i know i described it earlier but now you can see what it is so now we'll put a wrap around on it and get our measurement and like i said i'll show you what else you can do if you don't have a wrap around because most people don't all right that there is a wrap around it's basically a piece of felt or uh, not felt, but uh, whatever gasket material is. It's basically gasket material. So, you just wrap it around your pipe, literally. That's why it's called a wrap around. Line. You want to overlap it at least once or twice. This one's kind of worn out. I've cut it down, I've sacrificed it for a few projects. Okay. Get it on your mark, get set, get ready, go. So as you can see, or not, we got it all wrapped over. We made sure to line it all up. You don't want it like that because then you're not going to have a true line. But if you get it all lined up just like that, it'll usually be a pretty square cut. I mean, it all depends on your skill. It's a good starting point if you don't have a big saw like most people don't have a big saw to cut six inch pipe if you do congratulations uh must be friends but anyways uh we'll throw some lines around this and i'll show you another way of doing it all right so this next trick i learned from actually youtube uh, it's where i learn a lot of stuff believe it or not uh guy not a guy well it is a guy uh channel called the fab forms most of you probably watch it if you're watching my channel because you know, you like to build stuff, so you try and watch as many fabrication channels as possible. Uh, God does awesome work. I think his name's Kyle. Uh, yeah, Kyle Voss. Uh, cool channel. Love watching it. But he, uh, yeah, he showed me that a couple years ago, and I, I thought, I was like, that's easy, simple. Everybody's got it, you know. Um, and I'll show you now how to do it if you haven't seen his video already. Uh, 
And if you like that idea, check out his channel, The Fab Forms, uh, Fabrication Nation. Uh, he puts out a lot of good content, a lot of helpful content, just tricks and ideas and trades of you know, how to get things done easily and effectively. So here we go. All right, this next one will be made out of cardboard. Uh, simple, everybody's got it. If you're making templates, obviously you probably have it. If you're building it without templates, you're pretty darn good. But here's what we're gonna do. We're just basically make a strip of cardboard. Basically just like that. We're gonna try and make it as uniform as we can on both sides, or at least on one side. If you got a factory edge of a long piece of cardboard, that'd probably be the best to go with. And we'll just cut a strip. Uh, obviously the bigger, the wider the strip, the more accurate it's gonna be. But first we need to find out the diameter of our pipe, the outside diameter. That way we're sure we have a long enough strip that way we're not going around the pipe and ending up short. So our pipe's six and five eighths, that's our outside diameter. If you convert that to a decimal, it's 6.625. If you don't know how to convert to a decimal, it's super easy. Just divide five into eight and it'll come up with 0.625. You can do that with any fraction that I've seen. Uh, I used to know them pretty much all by heart, but I've kind of forgot them over the years. But then we'll take 6.625, the diameter of our pipe, times it by 3.14, which is pi, and that'll tell us the total distance if you were to wrap a tape measure around your pipe. It'll tell you what that distance all the way around is, your diameter. So, circumference, one of the two. We'll do that, and we'll find out how much uh, cardboard we need. So what we come up with is 22.525, which is just over a half inch, just under 9 sixteenths. But we're going to go extra just to make sure we have one enough pipe to go around or enough cardboard to go around the pipe. And you want to overlap it. Uh, really, in all honesty, it's probably make it like 44 inches. Um, most people don't have a piece of cardboard that's 44 inches. So pretty much as long as you can make it come back around and overlap a little bit, it should be all right. But we'll see if we got some long cardboard. All right, I don't have any stock ends or stock edges on any cardboard. Used it all up, so we'll just make a straight edge. Uh, this is probably what most people do, anyways. All right, so now we got a straight line, and this is the piece that I did all of our measurements on. It's pretty thick, so that's kind of good. It'll help support everything, and keep it straight. Same principle as a wraparound. Wrap around a pipe. I make a measurement or nothing on this. I'm just doing it randomly for demonstration purposes only. The hardest part about it is if you have a like an old box that has cur or corners pressed into it. So you gotta make sure you get all those out. You want it to be as flat on the pipe as you can. Just like the wraparound, make sure your lines meet up. That looks pretty good. That doesn't look too bad. I should have. might have even got the measurement close. Dang, quarter inch off. Not bad for throwing it right up there. Could have had two measurements in one. Good. Six inches, six inches, little under six, sixteenth under, six inches. That ain't bad. You know, saved yourself having to buy a wrap around. You got the same concept out of it. So there's the wrap around versus the cardboard. I just run the wrap around over the line that we made in the cardboard. You guys can't see nothing there. But it wasn't too bad. There are some discrepancies right there. It ain't perfect. It's pretty close, though. Pretty darn close. And if you want it better, you, know, you can cut that out. If it's not to your liking, you can run a square around it and knock down your high and low spots. But for a free tool, that's not too bad. All right, so you can cut this with numerous uh, items. You can use a torch, plasma cutter, bandsaw, porta band, cutoff wheel. Um, 
I'm going to use a cutoff disc, Tybo as I call it. Uh, I know Metabo makes all kinds of power tools. This is how we've, we've always used them. That's what we would call them. That's what it is. But yeah, I'm going to use Metabo. Uh, I, I do better on that. Torch, I'm a little you know, shaky. Plasma cutter, a little shaky. Metabo, I can get a lot straighter, a lot less cleanup. Uh, so it's faster for me. So, here we go. Not too bad of a cut if I do say myself. And if you get a little bit crooked, you can just run it down with a grinder, straighten it up. I think that'll be good enough. Granted, my table isn't very flat, so that'll make it look worse. But we'll slap it on that channel and see if there are any imperfections. I'll grind them down and make them as square as I can. So if I've completely lost you on what we're doing with channel and pipe as far as making a bridge, I'm gonna make it up to you. This is. 8 inch channel, I believe it is. 8 inch channel. Outside to outside. Quarter inch thick. This is going to be our frame rail here. What we're going to do is basically mimic the factory coil pocket. We're going to cut the center of this out and then raise it up and we're going to set it inside of here. That way, when it's in the car, instead of our spring being down here, our spring will actually be up here. That way you don't lose those 3 inches. That's a pretty big deal when it comes to a spring. So now you're up to speed with us. We're going to get to laying this out, cutting it out, fabbing it up. And for everybody that says, oh, you're losing all your structural integrity by cutting a big hole in here. No, you're not. Uh, for one, you're replacing metal in it. Uh, for two, mainly your structure is right here on these sides. So if anything, we're probably increasing it because we're adding more uh, vertical sides on it to help with structure. Plus, I'm going to put a piece of channel across here also. Uh, I would like to do two pieces of channel, but I'm only human, and I can only lift so much weight. So we're going to run one piece of channel to kind of help reinforce it. Uh, I have seen a lot of these bow like bananas. I think a lot of times what happens is the solenoid sticks, and uh, or somebody overlocks the car. That's probably what it is most of the time. When they're lifting the car up evenly and overlock it, and they keep going, uh, it's more likely what bends them. But if you get somebody that has you know a pretty good bit of knowledge and has been using hydraulics for a while like this guy you know he's he's been around low riders for quite a few years so i got no worries about him uh i am going to try and build it as strong as i can possibly build it because there's no kill like overkill but uh you know just try and build it right and hope for the hope for the best uh prepare for the worst so we'll get to laying it out and we'll start cutting so our overall measurement from frame rail to frame rail is 42 inches. How it landed on that evenly, I could not tell you, but I'm not going to argue with it. This is on a Caprice, but also remember that I plated the inside of the frame with 3 sixteenths. So if you want to use that as a reference, have at it. I used to have all this stuff written down over the years. I've lost my pieces of cardboard that I've written it on. So if you want to have stuff that you'll have forever, as far as measurement wise, I usually write it on my toolbox or stick a piece of tape on my toolbox, write it on that. That way I don't have to go through the process of measuring again. Not all the times when you measure, is it right? I mean, it should be, but sometimes you run into stuff that isn't. Uh, Either make a template or write it down of your fitted size. Uh, I've got some reinforcements uh, for the axles that I did. It fit good, but uh, once I got my steel in there, got it where I wanted it, I made another template off the steel. That way it's dead on. It saved me a lot of fitment issues later, a lot of time grinding, making it just right. So I will do the same with this. Uh, if I have to trim it any, you know, I'll probably make a template of the ends, which it fit up pretty good, just a square end. Um, so I think that'll be all right. 
So I'm definitely gonna write these measurements down so next time I don't have to rethink it. I can just look at my drawings and build off of that. Possibly even ship it to people if they want. Uh, get a lot of people that want me to build stuff, ship it to them. The only problem with that is I really need to have something on hand to build it. Uh, I like to be able to be sure that it's gonna fit and I don't have to worry about shipping it to them and not fitting because their car is a little bit different than mine. You know, most of them are built pretty well the same, but sometimes you run into issues where they're not. Um, you know, or some, somebody added something on, like they reinforced the inside of theirs with a quarter inch or three eighths, half inch. Um, you know, so that would make your bridge need to be narrower. But, you know, a lot of times people don't know what they, what's been done to their car if they didn't build it. So it's kind of hard to work with it without it being, you know, here. But I digress, we will keep on trucking with this and start cutting it out. So this is where we stand. There's the outside to the outside. There is our center mark. This is where our cylinders are gonna be. This is where the edge of our pipe is gonna be. So just trace the inside of your pipe. I wouldn't do the outside. You can if you want to, but this is a lot easier. Just cut the inside, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece here and set it flush with the top of that. Like I said, you can cut the outside of the pipe and set it on top. Uh, I wouldn't really do that. That's, that's gonna make lining this up on your channel a lot harder. So, and I'll show you an easy way of fitting that in here and making it flat. Uh, literally, you just set it down in there on something flat, you know, do some welds around it. I usually weld the inside and the outside just to be safe. Uh, I'm sure welding just the inside or the outside would be strong enough, but like I said, no kill like overkill. So, we just laid that on our flat, made our measurements the same, both sides, did our tracing, and now we're going to cut that out with a plasma cutter, clean it up, transfer it over to here, weld it in, transfer that over to there, weld it on, bada boom, bada bing, done. We got everything laid out. Our holes for our cylinders, our holes for our spring pockets. Uh, tip of the wise, cut your inside stuff first. Because if you cut that and that falls out, then you gotta put that somewhere and cut it. So save yourself a little bit of headache. Cut that one, let it fall out. Cut that one, let it fall out. And you'll be ahead of the game. And now we've come to the time to put our top of our spring pocket in there. Bad as well. Put a bevel on it. I'll put my bevel facing up. I can try and get as much weld in there as possible. Because this is probably one of the most critical parts of a bridge. <clears throat> if you can't weld, I mean obviously the whole bridge, if you can't weld, I'd get somebody else to do it. But this is the part that will determine whether that spring will come up through your back window or not. So you might want to take a little bit of time do it right but with that being said I just set that flat on the bridge or any kind of flat surface I'm just using the bridge because it's flat and then just set that over it and that'll keep the top of it good and straight and flat simple enough don't forget your ground and your hood now just put a few welds in there flip it over put a few more tacks and go to welding it up clean the inside with a burr, get it all nice and smooth, that we don't have any problems with the cylinder rubbing, kind of shape it out a little bit more too. There we got our spring pockets all tacked on, I went ahead and welded the inside, got 
both sides tacked on. I fit it in the car. I had to trim about an eighth inch off each side. So maybe a quarter inch off each side. I had to get it to fit a little bit better in the back. The back of the frame does taper in apparently. I've got a piece of angle I'm gonna put in here. I'm gonna grind those edges so it'll come down a little bit further. But then we'll do some stitch welding across there. I'm gonna go ahead and do that before I burn all that in. Uh, I highly doubt this thing would warp up, but it'll give it some more strength. Uh, sometimes on big bodies, you'll have to notch that because their fuel lines are a little bit bigger than on a Caprice. So if you got a big body, I just put your notch down there, put a piece of flat plate, weld it in. It'll be good. This is just a little extra reinforcement. A lot of people don't do this. A lot of people also don't have a rooster. But uh, yeah, a lot of people don't do that. Uh, like I said, I've seen, I've never had one bow, but I've seen them, you know, on lay it low and all that, uh, where they'll just whoop, like a banana, and I will do whatever I can to keep that from happening. So, we're going to get this stuff rounded on the corners so it'll fit nice and snug, and then burn it in. Alrighty then, that's uh, going to wrap up this video, do another overview of the bridge, but i got to have something for you guys to come back and watch next time, uh, we'll be throwing it in the car later, but the uh, assembly is complete, uh, i got to put chain mounts on it, that's the only thing i got left to do, all it is is two pieces of square tube with holes drilled in it, I'm pretty sure you can figure that out, uh, but other than that, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, if you haven't already, Go ahead. You're not losing anything. If anything, you're you're here to gain. So, like, comment, share, subscribe. Like I said, uh, past 100 uh, 100 subscribers. That's awesome. Uh, let's see if we can do 200. I never thought it would have got to 100, but you know, here we are. So, I'm gonna leave you with it. Peace. Good shot. Got away free. It lives to die another day. <laughs>